Left alone and given enough time, all systems will reach equilibrium. Sometimes the reaction is so complete that we barely see any of the reactants. Conversely, for unfavorable reactions, we barely see any products being formed. But rest assured, equilibrium between reactants and products is established. To our eyes, a system at equilibrium looks static. Nothing seems to happen. But if you could see things on the molecular level, the system remains very dynamic and the forward and inverse reactions are constantly taking place. But as each molecule lost within a reaction is replaced by the inverse reaction, we see the system as being static. For any reaction at a given temperature, an equilibrium constant exists. The constant is expressed as products over reactants, with each species activity raised to the power equivalent to the number of its molecules in the balanced chemical equation. The activity is a unitless quantity. More specifically, for gases, it is the numerical value of the equilibrium pressure measured in atmospheres. For solutes, it is the numerical value of the equilibrium concentration measured in moles per liter, or molarity. Finally, it is particularly simple for liquids and solids where it is simply one. Mathematically speaking, since the activity is one for liquids and solids, it essentially amounts to just ignoring solids and liquids when working with the equilibrium constant. As we saw in the previous chapter, in thermodynamics, we had the reaction quotient, Q, that has the same mathematical expression as the equilibrium constant, K. However, Q is calculable with any concentration or pressure, while K implies only the use of the equilibrium values. Knowing the values of both the reaction quotient and the equilibrium constant allows us to know which way the reaction is going. If Q is greater than K, then we must react the products found in the numerator to generate the reactants found in the denominator. The reaction will thus go from right to left. The inverse reaction will take place. If Q is less than K, then the reaction will go from left to right. And if Q and K are equal, this is only possible if we have the actual equilibrium pressures and concentrations. We are therefore at equilibrium, and to our eyes, nothing happens.